Tyson, take one, marker. There's a line that emerged in Destiny 1 that wasn't planned for, but it's very deliberate by the person who put it in the game, and is very resonant for Destiny players, and resonant for me as a person. And that line is, Guardians make their own fate. That still gives me goosebumps. For me, that has sort of become a, a touch point for the Destiny story. Again and again, external forces come and try to impose a fate upon you and humanity. And again and again, you show them that they can't do that. We make our own fate. That's not just a powerful theme of Destiny, it's also a powerful theme for us as people, as both developers and as humanity. We make our own fate. When you're talking about 10 years of story, there's a lot of stuff crammed in there, and there's a lot of things that we could do and could talk about. But as storytellers, the hardest part isn't coming up with the ideas, it's knowing which ones are the important ones. We want to tell a story that makes you, the player, feel like all of that time that you invested, we saw you, and we want to give you the experience that you've been waiting for. We looked at everything we had, we laid Every it all out, uh, like whiteboards and like <laughs> everything. We were trying to look for a theme that felt resonant, not just for this story, but for destiny as a whole. And the theme that we kept coming back to was purpose and fate. And that's what this story is about, not just for ourselves as the player, but also for our characters. I used to think I'd give anything to bring you back. I cried quite a few times doing those scripts because I, I treated it with the love of a fan. Every time I opened a script, I was like, what would I want to see? What would I want to hear? You get to see their emotional journey, the struggle of how do we defeat the witness? The Witness sees itself as the one true God. So it's come to the Traveler because it needs the power of the Traveler's light to finish this vision. Its goal is salvation. Why don't you want that? Be reborn. Our mission is to make sure that we can prevent it from getting the light, the thing that it needs, in order to make it all happen. It's finally confronted the Traveler and here we are, thorns in its side, a blip on its radar, trying to make a difference. You're gonna speak to the witness, and the witness is gonna shine a light on some things, and you wonder, like, what would it be like? What, what would it be like to be a disciple of the witness? Your guardian's use has yet to be determined. We are in need of a god killer. Every time you hear the witness, you're not just hearing one voice, you're hearing whispers in the background, you're hearing all of these other textures. You're still resisting. You can feel a subtext sometimes where the real witness comes through, or at least things that it doesn't want you to know about it come through. There is only suffering! Putting characters into pressure cookers is what storytellers do best. And I can't imagine a more intense pressure cooker than it's the end of the world. If we fail, everything is frozen forever and only we can do it. It's just the handful of us inside of a god. There were a couple of themes that we had when we started on the Bill Hart. The two main ones that I remember were surreal and shared to spire. Seeing how they put a tiny little guardian at the beginning of this vast journey that's spreading out in front of you really put into perspective the scale that we needed to hit in order to make the pale heart look and feel dangerous and ambitious and vast. When we were thinking of surreal things, it was a bit of a challenge because how do you make something surreal? For me is putting familiar things out of context. What is the thing when you turn the corner that you are not expecting? So that's when we play with scale, we play with unexpected things, repetition, 
there's this awesome piece of concept art that is like this massive ghost in the horizon and you just like go over there and it's just like broken down in the middle and it's just weird in a way that is unsettling but at the same time feels very visceral another one that we used was body parts and it sounds a bit strange because <laughs> we didn't want to do body horror so I was taking screenshots from the game and just trying to find silhouettes and things that would look surreal. And I start replacing all the trees with hands. So all the limbs were made out of fingers coming out and eyes were on the floor. And I do remember our direction was like that, like more hands. Are there hands holding up the freeway in which we were born? Yes. <laughs> You'll recognize it instantly and then almost as quickly, you'll realize you've never been here before. I definitely feel like there's some aspects of the Pale Heart where like, this is freaking weird and scary. I wanna take that risk. I wanna push a little bit of what expectations of a destination can be. And I hope that players love that. As players progress, they get to see more influence of the witness, not just on the traveler, but also on the races that it's interacted with that we've seen so far. The dread are a result of the witness experimenting with the light. So while it's inside the Pale Heart, it's able to access the light as it's trying to siphon it. It is using that light to create and alter new and different combatants. And so we've encountered some of these members before. Now we have a name for them. The new dread units. They're using a new language, collaborating with narrative, we went through and used this constructed language tool to generate different phrases and figure out like grammar structures and, and other things. The pyramid language that the new uh, Dread units speak is actually translatable. So players, if they're really interested in figuring out what the, the pyramid units are saying, could decipher these. Kos yen it get, baktoku vakad. The husks are an interesting addition to Destiny because you've never fought anything like them before. We talked about, oh yeah, they need some big weapons. Like, it needs to look like this thing is serious business. They wanted a bit of a secondary unit on it, so like a two-in-one. As the sketches were progressing, we were kind of like, oh, this feels like it's sentient. And we just love the idea. We had all these different sound effects in our library of water bladders that make some really cool sounds when they're shaken. We use some sounds of slapping jello too. So that was kind of the foundation for the husk. We have all these real physical sounds that come together and feels like an alien moving around in the stomach of this thing. The collaboration between the different disciplines and the trust we have for each other. At the end, it comes out better than anybody could have made individually. There's a moment where you realize, looking at the final shape, that it's not just a story about the Guardian's journey, it's also kind of the story of Destiny's journey. It starts in a place of uncertainty and challenge, and then it changes and evolves, and it proceeds forward into the unknown. And as you get closer to the final shape, those two experiences converge. We know where we're going, we know where we're aiming for. I feel very confident about the love and the work and the thoughtfulness that everyone working on this release put into it, and I think it's inevitable that when people start going in and experiencing all these different things that make up this expansion, I think they're gonna see it. I won't lose another soldier in this war.